Hello and welcome to the second video in the AutoCAD 2021 Basics for Beginners series. In this video I will share the interface preferences that I normally use in AutoCAD. This may help you understand how certain things appear in my videos. You may notice that other people set up their interface in different ways and that is okay. As you develop your own ability with AutoCAD you can choose your own preferences. My main preferences are based on the following six things. Hiding the Windows taskbar, grid and snap modes, dynamic input, polar tracking and object snap settings, viewing the properties and calculator palettes, and when you are more advanced, right click customization. When you open up AutoCAD, it should look something like this. And the first thing to notice is that the software isn't actually filling the screen. You can see on the right hand side here, there's something else in the background. So let's maximize the window just to give us the most area visible. And another aspect that helps with giving you fuller drawing area is hiding the Windows taskbar. So in all my other videos, you will notice that you will be able to see the taskbar along the bottom with all these icons and things. So to hide that, if you right click on the taskbar, go to taskbar settings, the window will fill the, the desktop more and only whenever you go down to the bottom of the screen and hover will that come up. Um, the next point then is in relation to grid mode and snap mode. So if we are going to draw something in AutoCAD, let's zoom in. And if we want to start to draw a line, if, um, if snap mode is turned on, you will see that the cursor jumps around to the intersections of that grid and it limits the way you draw. So it's probably better in most situations not to be doing that unless you need that on. So definitely turn the snap mode off. And my own personal preference is also not to have the grid lines. Some people like it, uh, so that's fair enough. But it's, it's much easier to be able to draw with that being turned off. The next aspect is dynamic input. So as standard... AutoCAD appears with this command line and as you are drawing you will notice that things appear in uh, in the task bar or the command line and things also appear beside the cursor. Um, so my personal preference is to set up the dynamic input so that everything appears beside the cursor. You don't have to look at the cursor and at the command line both and to do that, to hide that, you can click the X here. Now, just remember that if you want that to appear again, the shortcut for making the command line appear is Control and 9. And Control and 9 does make it disappear again. Now, let's say you wanted to view commands that you had done recently, not maybe the most immediate command. To get the fuller version of the commands to appear, if you hit F2 on your keyboard, that will bring that up. That's for more advanced settings, I suppose, but it is something I would bring up at times if I have uh, taken a number of dimensions, for example. Um, let's see if I use the, the distance tool there. If I have done a dimension there, and then I've done another dimension and I want to view what I have done previously. If you hit F2, that'll give you the two historic distances that you've taken. Moving on to the polar tracking and object snap then. So I think in the first video I did mention briefly the polar tracking. So that is this tool down here. Um, actually, just before I leave the dynamic input, I should say that for dynamic input to work, it needs to be visible down here with the toggle buttons and it needs to be turned on. If it happens not to be visible, you can click the little bars menu here. And if you go up to dynamic input, that turns that toggle button on and off. 
The next one to think about is polar tracking. Some people do use ortho mode. Generally that restricts that to 90 degree options. Um, whereas with polar tracking, if you right click on that, you can bring up different options here. And indeed for more advanced uh, settings, you can add more in. So let's say you were working always with a particular angle in your drawing for whatever reason, maybe it's an angle of, of 12 degrees or something. Maybe you have a sight of a particular shape or an object that's a particular angle. You can also add in random angles or customized angles there. So for that one, I tend to use 30, 60, 90 options like that. However, you can also choose one that includes uh, 45, 90 degrees, if that works better for what you're working on at this point in time. Um, also, that option there sometimes is useful because it gives you 30 as well as 45 degrees. Make sure that's turned on. And object snap is the next one over then. So as default, AutoCAD doesn't really give a big number of options for that. Usually it's endpoint, center point, intersection and extension. If you right click on the toggle button and go to the object snaps settings, I would definitely recommend having the midpoint on because that's one that is used quite a lot. And then with your own drawing preferences, it may be at, at other stages that you need some of these tools, but the perpendicular tool is definitely a very handy one. With great caution, I would recommend this one being the nearest tool sometimes, but it just depends on what you're actually doing. So just to demonstrate now how that, that tool works, there is the midpoint, which is a triangle symbol showing. So I can draw a line from the midpoint to a midpoint like that. Now let's say I wanted to draw another line and I wanted to go to the nearest. I don't have that set up as a, a standard uh option here so let's say i wanted to choose something over here and go to nearest or let's say you were drawing somewhere and there were a number of different uh, object snaps appearing and you wanted to make sure it was going to the right one if you hold down shift and right click that will bring up this shortcut menu and that means you can choose the one that you actually want it to go to it will override any of the, the default ones and make sure that it gets accurately to the point that you want it like that. So that's it in terms of polar tracking and object snap. The next thing then is a useful option to have some extra palettes available. So palettes are menus that kind of float on the general drawing area. Um, so if we select just a line like that there and right click and go down to properties that will open up a properties palette now you'll notice that has automatically opened up and docked when you open up yours it will probably be showing more like this floating in the middle of the drawing area so how do we get that to appear the way i had it at the start if you drag or click and drag using that darker gray bar on the left drag that over to the left hand side and let go that docks the properties palette and then if we hover over the gray bar again it will bring up two little options there the x will close that if you want to get rid of it and the one beside it is a minimize bar so in the same way that i minimized the windows taskbar the properties taskbar can be hidden as well now that might make that quite thin so i would advise you maybe to tinker around with that and just widen it depending on what you're working on you might need to see more of the information here and the palette size can be amended accordingly but then once you click and start drawing in the main drawing area that will hide that and all you need to do to get it to appear again is just hover over it on the left hand side now you can do the same thing with the calculator. So the calculator tool does normally appear here and it might be easy enough just to click on that and have it opening. But again, with that, it will maybe open it floating like this, a palette on top of your drawing area. 
And in the same way that we did with the properties palette, you can drag that over and dock it. And that will have that visible in the background. Um, at this point, it's docked it so that it is showing. So we can minimize that one as well. And you'll notice that now the properties palette is showing as a bar at the top left hand side and the calculator is also showing but on the bottom part. Finally, um, when you are doing drawings and things, um, when you're on, in the middle of a command, for example, you will normally be hitting enter on your keyboard and then you maybe need to repeat the command. So I'm just going to hit enter on the keyboard and then draw a line again. Um, you might want to delete something and then to repeat the command you have to hit enter on the keyboard and you maybe need to select the objects and delete hit enter on the keyboard again what you can do is use right click customization to speed that process up so if we go to the menu for options like this and within this there's lots of different settings that you can amend according to your own personal preferences um, colors for the backgrounds on the display and, and that type of thing. Uh, I'm not going to go into those in great detail, but what I'm going to show you is the right click customization. So as default, I think it normally shows that uh, it's a shortcut menu comes up when you right click. Default mode, if no objects are selected, right click means repeat last command. And if a command is in progress, right click means enter. So I'm going to apply that and close and click OK and just show you what that means then in reality. So if we're going to draw a rectangle here, if I right click, that automatically starts the command to draw another rectangle and you can just keep going. Um, so if you're offsetting a number of items or you're copying a number of items at different distances that just speeds the whole process up in the same way if you delete something you can hit the delete tool up here or the erase tool and if you right click that will allow you to repeat the command and delete something else and that just can speed things up quite a bit so hopefully you'll find those preferences those customizations useful thanks for watching this video i hope it was useful if it was please feel free to hit the like button and you can subscribe for future videos